boudoir photographer from New York and I run Generations, a boudoir studio. This month I talked about, um, in my article, about having a more stylized boudoir session. There's a couple different reasons why I decided to do one this month. First of all, I've been feeling like I'm stuck in a little bit of a creative rut. Um, I'm turning out good images, my clients are happy, but I'm a little bit bored and I need to challenge myself. So when you feel like that, I definitely recommend um, coming up with some sort of inspiration to do a shoot like this. My inspiration was actually um, from a Coco Chanel um, perfume bottle. It was dark, it was noir, and I really liked it. And I thought to myself, well, maybe I could do something dark and light. Um, you have to sort of be flexible when you're planning these things, like I was. I had a couple of bumps in the road. Uh, I planned a whole Pinterest board, two Pinterest boards actually, one dark, one light, and I picked a bunch of lingerie from a store um, that I wanted to work with, and at the last minute the store bailed on me. So I had to sort of throw everything together at the last minute. But it still worked, and I'm going to show you um, a couple of reasons why, and I'm going to go over the different details that I had to plan to make sure that the shoot worked. First thing, like I said, you need to pick a theme or an idea for the shoot. I get my inspiration from all sorts of places, magazines, fashion, TV, movies, books, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, I've thought about doing shoots like um, princesses or storybooks or movies that I've seen in the past. Whatever inspires you, pick a theme and then work from that. From there, I recommend pulling images off the internet, either by Pinterest or other areas or other ways that you can do that. I use Pinterest. I think it's really easy um, and it's a really great way to organize. And then I can show the Pinterest boards to my hairdressers, my wardrobe people, my makeup artists. I can make sure we're all on the same page. I also use the Pinterest boards to show the models. So when I try to hire a model, um, she might say, well, what do you have in mind for the shoot? I can show her the board and she gets an idea if it's something that she wants to do or not. So definitely kind of get an idea of what you want to do, organize your thoughts, pin pictures of lingerie, hair and makeup, um, anything you can think of that would work for the shoot or anything you want to use as an inspiration. Once you have that, I definitely recommend scouting for a location. For me, um, I actually went to Airbnb. It's a website where you can rent rooms or um, houses or apartments from people by the day or you know by the night. And I found a really great place in Brooklyn that I really love, so I wanted to shoot there. And I also got some influence from that place as well. They had a lot of antiques there. It had a little bit of an old feel, so I wanted to make sure everything meshed together. I also recommend looking at hotel rooms studios if you have, maybe swapping studios with somebody else that has one. Um, get creative. Does somebody have a beautiful room in their house? Um, is there a mansion or nearby that maybe will rent you for, you know, rent you for a few hours? Think outside the box a little bit. What can you do? Even outdoor shooting is really great. Um, your model might be a little cold in the winter, but sometimes that's okay with them. If not, in the summertime, definitely scout some outdoor locations. Uh, it's really fun to shoot outdoor boudoir. So now that you have your location in place and you have your idea in mind, it's time to find some models. And the reason why this is the next step is because we want to make sure before we plan our wardrobe, we know who we're trying to fit. There's different places you can find models. First is Model Mayhem, of course. Um, there's a lot of models that will work for free um, if you give them the photos, trade for portfolio, it's called. Um, I personally like to pay models, even if it's a little bit, because that's how I ensure that they're actually going to show up. Oftentimes when you work with a model trade for portfolio, if a better offer comes along, she's going to diss you to take that offer. So I want to make sure my models are going to come, so I pay them a little bit. If you can't afford to pay your models, you can always put a casting call out on your website or on Facebook looking for what you're looking for. So, hi guys, I'm looking for a woman who's a curvy girl who has a bunch of freckles and curly hair. Anybody fit that you know, model type? Let me know. I'd love to shoot you. Chances are you're going to get people to write to you. If your work is good and they love you and they want you to shoot them, you're going to hear from them, believe me. So that's another way to go about it. The third way is to ask other photographers. One of the models I had for my shoot, I did get from another photographer who I admire and respect and I love his work. And I said, hey, you know, I love that model you work with. Can I have her number? And he said, yeah, absolutely. Here's her number. Have a great time with her. She's amazing. So I knew she was going to show up. She came as a referral, um, highly recommended, and she absolutely did the job wonderfully, and I was really happy to have her. So that's how I would recommend getting models for a shoot. As far as styling is concerned, you can do it a couple different ways. Like I mentioned before, I have a store that I work with a lot, and she'll lend me some lingerie. It didn't work out this time, and I didn't know until about two days before the shoot. So what did I do? I grabbed my purse, and I headed to the mall. 
it's not the most amazing place to shop, but if you really scound through a lot of different areas, you can find some really cool things. I love stores like H&M, Forever 21, that sell things fairly inexpensively, um, American Apparel. You can create a lot of different looks. So I grabbed some stuff from those stores, and I also grabbed from um, a little bit of a higher-end store, Anthropology and Free People. I wanted to get a really soft, pretty look for my light sessions, and I felt that the outfits from Anthro and Free People really suited that. Now that it's all coming together, let's talk about the finishing touches, the icing on the cake, the hair and the makeup. I definitely urge you to have professional hair and makeup at your stylized shoots. It makes a world of difference. I um, also find that they will that your hair and makeup artist will work trade for portfolio as well. So if you tell a makeup artist or a hairdresser, listen, I'll give you all the pictures, you can use it for your portfolio, but can you come and work for me for the day? They'll usually do that. Sometimes I like to also throw in a little bit of money to make sure they show up as well, but usually they'll just work trade for portfolio. It's good for them and it's good for you. For these shoots, I had some crazy ideas in mind for the hair. I wanted some crimped hair, big, kind of crazy bird's nest sort of an idea and I really wanted to make sure that I expressed that to my hairdresser because I wanted to make sure that she had the proper crimping iron. So make sure you communicate with them, tell them what you're looking for, send them pictures beforehand. One of the women I wanted to put in a dark lipstick so I asked my makeup artist Diana, do you have dark lipstick? I know it sounds innate but a lot of times we forget to communicate with them and then they don't have the proper um, supplies that they need the day that they show up for the shoot. So you want to make sure that they're set, you're on the same page, and they know what you're looking for. And sometimes it's really nice to let them have a little creative freedom too. After all, it is part of their portfolio and they might have some really great ideas. So make sure you work together as a team to create exactly the look that you're going for. Don't forget these stylized shoots are not for clients, so you could really do whatever you want. Step out of the box, do something creative. I did two different shoots. One I shot with a regular 85mm and the other one I shot actually with a lens baby, the Optic 80. Um, I wanted to just try it and do something different. And what's the worst that's going to happen? If you fail, nobody knows. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you succeed, you could succeed very large and really make sure that your work is being taken to the next level and to show your clients what you're capable of when they keep asking you for the same thing over and over again. I hope you learned something from me today. I hope you try some stylized shoots. And if you do, email me pictures I want to see. Generationsphoto at gmail.com. I hope you guys have a great day and keep shooting. Bye!